I've been mentioning in some of my more recent videos, I have developed a more accurate and efficient method of determining whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract in relation to syntaxing, because as you know, and as if, you, if you've watched my YouTube channels and you're familiar with correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, syntax, mechanics, that tangible contract words are either going to be verbs, adjectives, or pronouns, and non-tangible contract words are going to be adverbs, verbs, or pronouns. Or to put it in a negative condition of state, tangible contract words will not be adverbs, and non-tangible contract words will not be adjectives. And this really narrows down the syntax mechanics and gives the, the learner closure on an efficient method and how to do this. And so what I've done, along with my friend, brother, and mentor, colon raven hyphen farhad hyphen tohidi colon afarin, is developed this method using parse so that you can know without a shadow of a doubt whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract. And we're going to give you a very simple example right here. He shall run. Now, in the past, I may have syntaxed it like this. DPV means dangling participle verb. However, with this new and laser-like pinpoint accuracy mechanic of finding out whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract, this is not correct. There's no closure to what this is. By the way, if anyone out there can tell me what their closure of shall as an adverb in the future tense is, email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and we can set up a meeting and you can share those closures with me. Because as it stands, uh, with my study and also as a language tutor, grammar tutor, since February of 2018, this is not the case. And I'm going to explain it to you in the next section of the video and then I'm going to come back to the dry erase board and show you using these mechanics, these accurate, dependable, reliable mechanics, how the correct way to syntax this sentence would be. So here we are at the beginning of our syntax and parse journey for the sentence, he shall run. So what would we do, what we would do to determine the tangibility and non-tangibility of those words is to look them up one at a time. And because the most efficient way and accurate way to syntax is to go backwards, we will start with the word run. And look it up at etymologyonline.com and find out where it comes from. So we see it comes from rain in, iron in, to run, flow, run together. All come from the Proto-Indo-European form of the root REI, which means to run, to flow. Upstreams from the 1200s, machinery, be in charge of. Uh, Rhyme of flowing. So we can basically validate and certify that run means to flow. Uh, in a tangible sense, we have a contract with what flowing is. Therefore, we have a tangible contract with what running is. Now, how about shall? Let's look that up. I owe, he owes, no, oh. Middle Dutch sullen, Proto-Germanic scowl, sullen to owe, obligation, guilt, from Proto-Indo-European root scowl, obligation. Also comes from should, 
well, the, a form of it is should, which means guilty. So just for kicks, let's go here. Past tense of see original notion of obligation. So again, okay, so should and shall. The nativity mean in grammar and language is, is obligation. So we have a tangible contract with what obligation is, therefore shall is tangible contract. Now let's look up he. He is a pronoun, obviously. So third person, Proto-Germanic hi, he, from Proto-Indo-European variant root of co, this, here, this, hither. I don't really see a tangible contract with what this is. Because number one, if you look at it on the surface, when you look at it, uh, in Google, um, a personal pronoun changes its form to indicate a person, number, gender, and case. So, as I say in a uh, video that I'll leave a link to in the upper starboard side corner of your screen here. The pronoun can represent anything in grammar. It can, it's, represent, it's indicative of anything. So you, he, she, it, we, there, there's no tangible contract with what that is. Now, if we say Jason shall run, now we have a tangible contract with what a Jason is, but we don't have a tangible contract with what a he is. This, here, <laughs> those words also have this same type of uh, mechanic behind them in that there's no closure as to what that is. So he is non-tangible. So to review, we have run as tangible, shall as tangible, and he as non-tangible. Now that we have closure on the tangibility and non-tangibility contracts of these words, let's start at the end. Run is a tangible contract pronoun being colored by shall, which is a tangible contract adjective in the future tense, which is being modified by the adverb he. Now the reason why he is an adverb and non-tangible contract, to give you a little more closure on this, is because what is an adverb? An adverb is an abstract condition of state. It's a concept. There's no tangibility to it. It's pure modification. I'll leave a link to a video right here that will give you closure on that as well. So therefore, it's either going to be a modifier or it's going to be a verb being modified by something or it's going to be a pronoun standing by itself. In this case, it's an adverb which is modifying an adjective. Adverbs modify adjectives, adverbs modify verbs. Adjectives modify and color pronouns. Pronouns may stand by themselves. Verbs are only modified by adverbs. Of course, you're more than welcome to look at my YouTube channel. As I always say in the comments fields, uh, any question that you have, you will be able to answer it if you would just spend, take the time to study the videos. I have taken the time to create these videos. It's contingent upon you as the viewer to study them. That's your investment. I've already made my investment for the betterment of my fellow mankind. And also, you may apply, if you wish, for my Confidential Correct Grammar workshops where, you know, there's nothing in the workshop that's secret or anything like that. It's just people uh, go to the workshops, if they qualify, to have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with me so that I can answer their questions on the spot and give them those closures right then and there. Anyways, the venue for that is jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, which is a confidential email contract venue, of which I am the venue commander and master. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be making, uh, I hope to make some more videos like this, 
maybe getting a little more complicated as we, mo as we roll along. Thank you.